feel like there's three sets of like language, right? When you speak, it's a spoken word. When you write, it's a written word, right? And then there's the speaking in tongues, which is babble, speaking in the spirit, which nobody could understand. You can't even understand. That's between you and God, you and your higher power. I believe that's tapping into a divine source. The movement in Los Angeles started actually the, the hybrid of I would say the East Coast, New York graffiti, Philadelphia graffiti. We were first exposed to it via television. We mm -hmm. didn't have the internet back then. So we watched music videos and um, a movie called Style Wars. Style right. Wars. So that was a major impact on me, I could say. And I, I could only speak individually because in the early days of graffiti, there was no crews. It was just basically individuals going out and, and writing. The early to mid 80s, people started forming crews. And initially, so like this is what Los Angeles is famous for, this calligraphy, typography, complex letter form. I know you refer to it as spiritual language, which I love. But where did it change from graffiti for you? Because you didn't just go straight into this. I believe your no. first tag was Chaos 2. Yeah, it was Chaos 2, yeah. Being in the early infancy stages of graffiti in Los Angeles, we didn't really know the techniques, how to do regular pieces. So I used to do everything backwards where I did the outline first and filled it in, like okay. a coloring book, yeah. yeah. So, And then when we watched Style Wars, we kind of saw the techniques that people in New York were using. And then you also had like murals that were cultural murals done by the LA streetscapers in the neighborhood I grew up in, Boyle Heights. So those murals were all over, you know, they were political, cultural. They weighed a lot on realism yeah. and surrealism. There was also like neighborhood graffiti, which were the neighborhood tribes, I would call them. Our Mike's particular crew, K2S, we fused the styles, which were like the neighborhood styles with traditional graffiti. Where did that influence come from though? So Chaos 2 to this, because this had never been done before. You yeah. started this genre, you, your gang, the pioneers from this LA scene have created your own genre, I believe, within street yeah. art. I'm just so curious to know how it goes from Chaos 2 to, to that, because it's such a different feel, you know? And if you'd never seen it before, yeah. how did you get there? Well, it was a total evolution. Yeah. I mean, for Los Angeles, it was revolutionary. So that kind of uh, gave us our own identity separate from New York, because New York was such a strong presence, still are such a yeah. strong presence. And they were so much more evolved stylistically and technically, you know, they were light years ahead of us at that time in the 80s. But I think one of the things that we had on our side was in order to make our own style, we fused what we saw in our neighborhoods yeah. and we made a concoction of that and this. In Los Angeles, you had a lot of like black letters, which was calligraphy letters, Old English fonts that people used to get tattooed. We have a heavy tattoo culture in LA, Southern California, Northern California. We basically used all those influences and put them in one pot, and mixed it up. And that's where my crew kind of flourished. And we built our own unique styles off of that. And then I reverted to the brush, you know, because um, it's a funny story with the brush for me because when I started doing art shows in the early 2000s, you know, I was trying to use spray paint on canvases, but it was like, it was just smelling up my apartment and it was just, I couldn't do it. Mm. So I started using brushes, but it was so slow painting everything in. It wasn't like the same fast movement as graffiti. And so what I started doing was, you know, just out of necessity, I had to use paint brushes. So I started doing acrylic and it covers a lot. I was trying to do like regular graffiti, but like color it in with paint markers and, mm. and acrylic. It wasn't feeling natural for me. So what I started doing was doing a lot of the lettering that I did, the one stroke lettering that I did. I never thought it would amount to anything, but I would start doing that. And people were like, oh shoot, I like that. Mm. And, um, I just started really honing my skills on, with the brush. In that environment, in that moment, you wasn't doing this to make money, to be famous. You was just doing it for the scene. 
it was what you've done with your brothers, your brotherhood, yes. and you was creating good art. In comparison to nowadays, it's all yes. about being known, going on social media. So it's really, really yeah, it polar was, opposite m moments. Yeah, it was definitely polar opposite because all graffiti in Los Angeles at the time was, it was like basically illegal. You know what I mean? Because I, I get it too, because we, our styles at that time were so like, <laughs> I wouldn't want that on my wall. You know what I mean? <laughs> what we were doing back then. So I don't, I don't blame people, you yeah. know, for not wanting it. So we used to just do it on our own. And, you know, that was pre-social media. And everything back then was incognito. Yeah. You know, it was low key. So you never like, oh, I did that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? You'd be like, who's that? I wonder who that is. You just did it. But, you know, you, you yeah. try to throw it. So everything was an esoteric movement. It was an underground movement. Yeah. You know, it was it was a it was a hidden language. But now everything's opposite. You know, like you like you do something, you post it. You, you know, people post what they're eating. People yeah, yeah. post when they're running. <laughs> everything. Everything. They're getting out of their car. They're posting <laughs> it. Right. I mean, you know, that's how it is. That's yeah, yeah. that's the culture now. So. I'm kind of in the middle of it. I mean, you have to adapt with the times, but also I think a lot of graffiti has lost its mystery and its uh, uniqueness. It's lost a lot of its rawness. You know, everything's not dangerous anymore. Yeah. Everything back then was dangerous. Like going out and painting was dangerous. It could cost your life, mm. you know, back then, you know, cause the streets were dangerous. Yeah, I mean, the, the time period, you know, doing my own research and looking into it. Yeah. Because people perhaps perceive LA, Hollywood, Beverly Hills, glitz, glamour. Yeah. But the reality yeah. is in that time period, there's some very troublesome yeah. neighborhoods and some frightening things going on for the young people that are being yeah. developed in that moment. I mean, it was, that's, that's one thing about, I, I would say America in general, right? There's different classes, you know what I mean? With the rich, you have underprivileged neighborhoods and you know, those were the neighborhoods I grew up in. And um, you know, I've lived all over the city though. You know, so I can't say I was just solely there, but when I was there, it was, you know, there was a lot of unrest at the time, social social unrest also. You know, we had the LA riots, which was a very pivotal mm. moment in history. And I, I just happened to be around in some of those dark ages. And then you, you look back at now, like, wow, that was, that was pretty crazy. Mm. You know, but at the time you're just in it, you're just there, you're just existing. It's the norm. Yeah, it's, you don't it's, know anything. yeah, you don't know anything other than that because it's happening around you and you can't really control your environment, you know, mm. what's going around, on around you. And do you think because there was environment or, or hardship like that in certain areas, that's perhaps why there was such a big gang culture? Because if you're a gang, you've got others who you can relate to. You're in the same situation and you've got that love and perhaps that becomes like your family as such? That's just a title because... I think everybody has an inclination to have a family, to have a group of friends. You, yeah. might, you call it a fraternity. You know, you can call it anything. That's just a negative connotation to it. I mean, yeah, obviously there was negative aspects to that. Especially when you're a kid, you want identity, you want friends, you want people that are gonna have your back, you yeah. know? And a lot of energy as a kid, I realize now that it's, a lot of it's misguided, right? We don't know what we're doing, you yeah. know, cause our cerebral cortex isn't fully developed and yeah. it's just like, Anybody else could look back and say a lot of things didn't make sense. You know, there's a lot of warfare that goes on around the world that doesn't make sense, right? Mm. Like wars are won and fought, lost, you know, and it just, life goes on. Mm. And in that moment, you only know what, what you know. And yeah, if you don't and know yeah. a different way, a different life or a different course to take, then what are you to do to a certain extent? Exactly. So you started tagging the streets 10, 11 years old? Yeah, yeah, very young. When did yeah. it excel into a big movement. This is taking the world by storm now. We're getting recognized. Oh, jeez. I mean, as in terms of graffiti, it took a while, I think, for actually to get into gallery shows and stuff like that. It, it's still evolving, I think, you know? Yeah. I mean, there's a bigger movement now. It's more accepted. It's more like, I mean, they got spray paint made for graffiti writers. I would have yeah. never thought that would have happened when I was a little kid. It's too you know? easy for them now. Yeah, it's wild. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's wild. I mean, there's things that I've seen that are just like, you know, unbelievable for me, you mm. know, like, I mean, even the music, I mean, we used to get all our music at the swap meet, you know, Slauson swap meet, mm. you know, Compton swap meet, you know, and, and now it's mainstream and it's wild, you know, you got guys like NWA, you know, it's like, wow, they're legends and, yeah. you know, we used to buy all that stuff and, and uh, just to see the movement evolve and what it is now, it's, it's, it's wild, it's, 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 it's almost surreal. Yeah. 
Well, if you look back 40 years ago, criminal damage mm. frowned upon. This isn't an art form to some of the prices yeah. these artists are fetching today. Yeah. It's ridiculous. A Basquiat sold for 110.5 million in 2017. Exactly, but in yeah. the 80s, this was people were turning their nose up at it. So yeah. the walls that have been broken down and not just in that graffiti, that street art world, but the wider graphic of this typography stuff that's starting to get more and more recognized now. And I think this stuff has got so much more way to go because I think, yeah. you know, people talk about the Basquiat, the Keith Haring, the Richard Hamilton, perhaps a little bit more yeah. at this moment in time than this. But from what I've seen over the last day or so, that is probably the best artistic skill set I've seen in person. How delicate you need to be is yeah. like anything else. Yeah. There is no room for error in that stuff. No, there's no there's no eraser or nothing, no, no, no do-overs. It's, it's one shot, one kill. And yeah. what I thought was remarkable, I said when you first walked in here, I said, how did you know where you was going to start? You went, I just let it flow. Yeah, I just let I it just flow. I just find my yeah. moment and uh, that's you. And you refer to it as your spiritual language. So talk to us more about what that means to you, that spiritual language. I feel like there's three sets of like language, right? You know what I mean? Like when you speak, it's a spoken word. When you write, it's a written word, right? And then there's the speaking in tongues, which is Babel, which is speaking to the spirit, which nobody could understand. You can't even understand. That's between you and God, you and your higher power. I believe that's tapping into a divine source. You know, when I hit a flow state, I feel like I'm a conduit, like I'm a vessel and my arms are just going. So it's almost like an out of body experience, like a meditative process. It's to me, sometimes it's a divine moment because I'll leave this place. I feel fatigued now after doing this mural. You know, it's so much intensity, right? But then I come back a month later and I'll be like, man, I don't, I don't even remember doing it. It feels like a dream. Because like you're dream in like a, a trance-like state yeah. at times in the subconscious. So there's a lot of walls where I'm like, whoa, I don't remember doing that. Mm. You know, and it's weird. Like, I know I did it, but it's like, it's like, whoa, shoot, that's a lot of work. Mm. And what I found really interesting is one minute we was having some music, then you wanted silence, then it was like yeah. motivational or podcast, and you're just feeding your brain or your body what you need to produce in that certain moment. Yeah, you know, it's it's gonna happen regardless what's what's in the background, you know, because sometimes I just play music and I don't have control, I'm on, on a lip, yeah. so. Usually when I'm doing it, I have my headphones or whatever, I'm listening to different things. Sometimes mm. I go silent too, like meditating, you know. Do you feel a lot of escapism and at peace and tranquility when you are working? It depends. Sometimes there's a lot of chaos too. Like as you see, this wall is huge. Yeah. So we're dealing with this monster wall and these time limits. And then like, I have to think about the next place we're gonna film, the interviews after yeah, yeah. my dog. You know what I mean? There's just a whole bunch of things that Racing. are going on right now. Like I have like, even in my mind right now, I have like three different things going on. Like you have to drown everything out. And you actually went back to Santa Monica and graduated with art, is that right? Yeah, yeah, I, I went to um, Santa Monica College, then I went to Cal State Northridge, graduated. Perfect. Let's touch on some of the, the really, really good stuff you've done because some of the accolades and achievements yeah. you have to date are amazing. I mean, you've done collaborations with the likes of Beats by Dre, LA Lakers, LA Louvre, some amazing things. Yeah. And up until this point that's probably been you heading up the artistic side but also the business that goes into an artist these days and to get them achievements on your own is pretty phenomenal because these are some of the biggest brands in the world you know yeah yeah i mean it takes some business acumen you know but i also use manifestation i just work and not worry about where it's going to go sometimes and just do the work and then you know the universe will work everything out my my god will work everything out this might be a simulation, man. Imagine that. <laughs> there you go. We spoke about that in depth, haven't we? And um, yeah. so talk to me through the, the Beats by Dre one. That's one that really, really interests me. How yeah. did that come about? How was it doing it? And is there any future other collabs that are on the horizon for you? Yeah, it was a phenomenal collab. Uh, uh, that one came, I believe, by manifestation. I guess preparation meets hard work. Yeah. I was ready to go and everything was a natural fit. You know, they, they liked my typography, the, the history, the style. We did a video expose on the, on, you know, with them, collaboration with the brand. I did a, the headphones, 
for the 2018 All-Star Game. That's it, yeah. And amazing. then that evolved into like doing LeBron's headphones, his personal headphones for the LA Lakers. I've been working with brands pretty consistently, different brands, and uh, I don't really seek it. If it happens and if it's a good fit, I'll do it. Depends on the project. That's yeah. why I don't really like talking about the future too much. I like just doing the work. And seeing what happens. Seeing yeah, what and then I, and also I'm brands are cool, but I like doing my own fine art. You know, my canvases because that's a true expression. Yeah, you absolutely. know, that's just me, all me right there, and it's it's a full expression of my artistic abilities and my vision, my yeah. passion, my dreams. Yeah, but you can see it flowing through them. You know, all mm -hmm. the pieces I've seen today are so unique within the same style. I don't think I look at any two pieces and think yeah. that I'm seeing something different, I'm getting a different feeling. Yeah. And I, th I think that's the energy that you're pouring into it. Well, the thing is, I, I see every piece as its own individual entity, not just like everything's gonna be a cookie cutter or a template or a different spin of the same thing. It's yeah. all spiritual language. So every time I speak in the spirit, it comes out in a different way. It, you see the style, but you know, this is only the beginning. I always see the count goes back to zero. You know, I don't say, oh, I did this, I did that. I didn't do nothing. We go again. You know, I'm, I, I want to be everywhere yet nowhere. Yeah. So, you know, I see everything as, like like I said, the count goes back to zero. And I don't really want to talk about what I'm going to do. I just want to do what I do. Yeah. And um, Let the work speak for itself. Yeah, and then really evolve. Yeah. Try to evolve what I'm going to do, new ideas, you know. We're working with new people, new management, new everything. Yeah. So we're gonna reinvent everything in 2023. Yeah, we we've, we've we've had some really good conversations, and like I say, I'm I'm blown away by the level of skill that you've got. Yeah. But also the importance to art history. I think that is a yeah. very very crucial thing, and you you certainly tick them boxes. And then we're moving into another box that perhaps people look at. It's museums and things like that and you know you've worked with the Getty Museum yeah. beyond the streets are a massive massive brand and exhibitor as well that are just going over to the Saatchi next month so the accolades the achievements that you're getting it's because of how important you are to street art as a whole to a genre to a movement because I, yeah. I truly believe that if you wasn't doing what you was doing back in the 80s yeah we perhaps don't see this as the movement it is today. That's how important you are to that scene. Yeah. And you're being rewarded for that now because, you know, people are coming to you, you're being celebrated yeah. and it gives me nothing but joy to see, mate, because the hospitality you've given us over the last couple of days has been fantastic. And to be able to sit here and, and speak with you and watch your work, it's it's really blown me away, mate. And it's great to be connected. Yeah. Thank you, man. Top man.